Hi, I'm Tom Johnson, and today I'm going to do a really basic introduction into what is orbit determination. So imagine, you know, we, here we have the Earth, and we know that there's something in space that is in orbit going around the Earth. And our job is really to figure out where is that object, what orbit is it in, so that we can then try to figure out where it's going to be in the future. So an orbit, pretty straightforward, it's, you know, we'll make it simple, we'll call it some sort of an ellipse or circle or whatever shape it may be in uh, as the object goes around the Earth. Okay. Now, the problem is, is I don't know that this is actually the shape of this object. So if I'm sitting on the Earth and I've got my little antenna here and I'm trying to collect some sort of a data or signals from this object to try to, to figure out what orbit it's in. And that's a case where I might want to take a measurement, and if I can fit, take a measurement, let's say it's azimuth, elevation, and range, it gives me a vector from where I am to where this object is that I saw. Let's imagine I'm a radar. Okay? And I know where my sensor, or my tracking station is on the Earth, which means I know this vector. So if I know where the station is and I measure the, the direction and distance to the satellite, I know where it is at some point in time. We'll call this T1. Now, what I want to keep doing is I want to collect more data because if I just only have one measurement, I don't really know anything other than there was a thing here at that time. So next, what I want to do is try to get another data point. So now what I'll do is I'll wait a little bit and set, say the satellite's going in this direction. And if I can get another measurement over here at time T2, I now have two locations for the spacecraft. Looking good so far. And you can continue this process a little bit more, and maybe I get another measurement over here at time T3. So now I have essentially three measurements, which each measurement was, or three sets of measurements. So let's say each set of measurements was azimuth, elevation, and range. And what I, in order to figure out the orbit of my spacecraft, what I really need to do is come up with what we call the state vector, or what is the position and velocity of this satellite at some instant in time. And so typically our state vector is represented in Cartesian coordinates as x, y, z, x dot, y dot, and z dot, where these are essentially the position and these are the velocity of the spacecraft. And if I know this at some epic time t, then I can essentially describe essentially the, the orbit that this spacecraft is in. So with my three points here. I now have three sets of azimuth, elevation, and range measurements, and I can make some assumption about the forces acting on my spacecraft, and in, in sort of in the grossest sense, it's, it's gravity, and we'll, that's the dominating force. And so in a typical, simple two-body uh, force model where it's just gravity and as a point source acting on my spacecraft, then Newton would tell us that this spacecraft will be traveling in an orbit that's some sort of a uh, conic shape. So if you say conic, really typically we're talking about a, a circle or a, uh, an ellipse. And then, you know, unless it's moving at a really quite high speed, then eventually we get into uh, uh, hyperbolic orbits, but we'll, we'll skip those for now. Once we have this, the orbit determination process basically says, if I know the force is acting on the spacecraft, I know where it was at a couple points in time based on these measurements, I can now solve for the orbit of the spacecraft and determine the complete state vector x, y, z, x dot, y dot, z dot. And then with that, I can now propagate my, my positions backwards and forwards in time and predict the orbit for the uh, going into the future or going into the past. And that allows me then to do my mission planning and figure out where the spacecraft's going to be so that I can communicate it with it, get data down, send data up, and figure out where it might be able to, say, image a particular part of the Earth or, uh, or do other, some other scientific mission. Thank you.